see we propose two uh, parallel notions, uh, quite different. Uh, one of them will be, say, convexity, and another one, uh, co-convexity. It is uh, known that if we have a arbitrary subfield of the subfield F of the real field and the vector space X over F, uh, a subset A of this space is usually called F convex if for all X and Y from A and from uh, an arbitrary T from the field and the uh, interval 0, 1, the convex combination of the form also belongs to A. Of course, the most important cases are when F is uh, rational and when F is the uh, field of all reals. Uh, here, S plus will be denoting an abelian semigroup and if we have an arbitrary subset A of S and an arbitrary integer N, positive integer, we have such, a, such three set operations denoting by NA, N inverse times A, and N brackets A, defined by this formula as one. And obviously we have the following inclusions, inclusions two, and uh, we know if we have, if we, if you would like to to to, to propose this, these two notions, we proceed in the following way: n convexity of of a subset A of a semigroup means that we have the first inequality, the first inclusion three, and n co convexity means that the second inclusion of three is, is satisfied. So, uh, in fact, in view of the last two inclusions in, in two, sorry, it is, it is obvious that A is n convex if and only if here we have the equality and A is co-convex, n co-convex if and only if we have here the equality. Uh, of course, uh, if we have a S, which is an additive group of a vector space of the field Q rationals, then of course uh, notions of n convexity and n con convexity coincide. It is quite clear, and such a set is n convex, n convex for all n if and only if it is close under rational convex combination which is simply known as a Q-convexity. More generally, it is, it is almost trivial that if the semigroup S is divisible by N, not necessarily unique, uniquely, then N-convexity implies N-co-convexity. And in the case when S is uniquely indivisible, both notions turned out to be the same. In general, however, they are different, quite different, whenever, of course, n is greater than one. And uh, the additive group of integers is a simple example of a set which is n-convex, but it is not n-co-convex. And another example, if we have the uh, circle, T, R over Z, which is of course identified with 0, 1. Addition is meant here modulo 1. Then this set is, this is arc 0, 1 over N is N co-convex, but it is uh, very, one can, one can uh, check it very simple that, that this is not N convex. So in general, these two notions are different. If we have an arbitrary non-void subset F of integers, of positive integers, we say that 
a subset A of the same group is F convex if it is N convex for all N from this set F. Similarly, we defined F co-convexity. And if A is N convex, so F capital is this, the whole set N, then we say that the set is simply convex or respectively co-convex if, if it is N co-convex. And observe, this is a very trivial observation, the, the whole semi-group is automatically convex. However, it may not be co-convex. And on the ha other hand, it turns out that singletons are co-convex, but in general, they are not convex. The following lemma gives some basic properties of the three operations uh, defined by the formula one. Mm. So we have the following properties and observe that there are places, places where we have only inclusions declared. Here, 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 probably five, five places, yeah? And these inclusions in general cannot be replaced by, by equalities. There are some simple um, uh, examples showing this. Provided that we have two sets A and B, A in, in B, we also have this property, so these three operations are monotonic. We have also these inequalities. Again, one can show that, in general, they cannot be replaced by equalities. For instance, if we would like to observe that these five inclusions in 4.4 are sometimes strong, it is, one can take simply the additive group C and let A equal B, that be the set of odd numbers and let K is equal to N is equal to two and one can observe that this, this example produce a counter example for equalities in, in point four. Proposition two, give some algebraic properties of the class of f-convex, f-co-convex sets and observe that there are some important differences between these two classes of sets. If we have a non-empty subset f of the integers n, the family of co-convex, f-co-convex sets is closed under algebraic addition under multiplication by k and under the operation k bracket. And the family of f co-convex sets is in general not closed under the operation k inverse. For all k, the, the family of f convex sets is closed under this operation k inverse. And in general, it is not closed under algebraic addition multiplication by k and operation k brackets. And there are again some simple examples showing that we have these this assertions collected here in proposition two. Uh, we have of course such a remark in the case when the semigroup S is uniquely divisible by n, we know that these notions of n-convexity and n-co-convexity coincide. And then, of course, the family of n-convex sets is closed under algebraic addition, multiplication by any integer k, positive integer k, and under the operation k minus 1 and k brackets. 
The next proposi proposition um, uh, shows you the properties, uh, set theoretical properties of these two families. Let us start with the family uh, of convex sets. Again, F is a non-empty subset of integers. And then the intersection of any family and the union of any chain of f-convex sets is again f-convex. This is a very pretty property and we would like to, to have such a property when we think about convexity, of course. In addition, the union of any chain of f-co-convex sets is again f-co-convex. But the family of f co convex sets is in general not closed under intersection. So this is rather strange and not very good property for convexity of sets, of course. Furthermore, the intersection of any f convex and any f co convex set is always f co convex. This is a property joining these two classes of, of sets. In particular, if we know that the whole semigroup is f co convex, then every f convex subset is also f co convex. Uh, here we have uh, again some simple examples. Now, since the family of f conv convex sets is closed under intersection, we can think about the notion of, of uh, uh, convex hull, F convex hull. So we define it as usual, as the intersection of all F convex uh, super sets of A. And clearly we have a usual, usual, some usual properties of convex hull, the set is contained in its convex hull, f-convex hull. Uh, the convex hull, f-convex hull is f-convex. In particular, in particular, we know that A is equal to its f-convex hull even only if the, say, the set A is f-convex. And uh, obviously the operation of um, convex hull is monotonic. We have some results about uh, this F convex hull. This theorem 4 uh, gives some inclusions. Uh, this is a kind of localization theorem for convex hull. Here F in uh, such brackets denotes the multiplicative semigroup generated by this set F. And as a corollary, a simple corollary, we obtain the following fact. If we know that F is a multiplicative subsemigroup of positive integers, then for every A, the convex hull is simply the sum over all the members of F of this set. So we have the, the form of convex, F convex hull of any set A. Uh, if we have a, a finite family of sets, we have also some information about the convex hull of the sum of this family. Such a convex hull satisfies the following inclusions nine, inclusion nine. And the next result, theorem six, gives some upper estimate for the F convex hull if F is again a multiplicative subsemigroup of N. If we have a finite collection of, of subsets of S, and we know that uh, each of them is contained with an N convex set then the convex hull of this uh, finite union is contained in the following sum.
as a consequence of this theorem. We have the following corollary which gives the form of n convex hull of the finite union of subsets of S in the case where, where the sets are covered by some n co-convex subsets of S. So we have, in this case, we have the form of the convex hull, the precise, here is equality. Yeah, I think we mentioned in the introduction singletons may not be F convex, unfortunately. And therefore, we are interested in, in the form of n convex hull of singletons. And proposition eight deals with this problem. We have a multiplicative sub semigroup of positive integers. Uh, then for all x, y in S, the f convex halves of x and y are either disjoint or equal. And uh, using this proposition, we, we, we know that this uh, family of convex holes of all single tons of S is a, is a partition of the whole semigroup. And we can uh, think about the equivalence relation induced by this partition, and it is uh, denoted by tilde, tilde F, tilde sub F. And we have the following proposition, proposition nine. Um, we have a multiplicative sub semigroup of N named called F. Then for any two points X and Y, the equivalence X tilde F Y holds if and only if there exists uh, uh, integer N in F such that N X is equal to N times Y. In addition, the semigroup operation of S is compatible with tilde F, which means that if we have uh, X1, which is in relation with X2, and Y1 is relation with Y2, then the sum X1 plus Y1 is in the relation with X plus, uh, X2 plus Y2. And in one of the words, uh, tilde F is a congruence relation on the semigroup S. So, the equivalence classes of this relation tilde F form a commutative semigroup, a Fabillian semigroup, with respect to, addi to addition of subsets, which will be denoted by uh, the semigroup S tilde, tilde F. And uh, for an element X, the equivalence class containing X is denoted by, by X tilde F. And observe that this uh, new semigroup S tilde has the constellation, the constellation low. The constellation low holds in, in this new, new semigroup. We have such a proposition 10. If F is a multiplicative sub semigroup of N, then for all points X and Y in S and any N in the set F, the equality N times X tilde is equal to N times Y tilde implies simply that X tilde and Y tilde are the same. So we have this N cancellation law in this new, sub, new semi group. <coughs> and finally, let me present some mm. applications, one of possible application of this short theory. We would like to prove uh, a version of the celebrated Stone's separation theorem. Uh, we have a subset F of positive integers two subsets A and B of the semigroup are called F disjoint if for all members of this set F, N brackets A times N brackets B is empty. And it is a trivial observation that uh, if two sets are F disjoint, then of course they are disjoint, but uh, there are some trivial examples showing that the converse is not true. 
for instance, odd numbers and even numbers are disjoint, but two brackets A and two brackets B are not. Uh, <coughs> if F is a multiplicative subsemigroup of N, then we have the following stronger statement. This is proposition 11. Uh, if F is a multiplicative subsemigroup of N and A and B are subsets of the semigroup S, which, I, which are F disjoint, then the F convex halves are disjoint. And conversely, if one of these sets is contained in an F co-convex set and the F convex halves are disjoint, then they are also F disjoint. This is a proposition about uh, this notion of uh, F disjoint. And for the separation of N disjoint sets, we have the following separation theorem of uh, stone type theorem 12. Uh, let A naught and B naught be any N disjoint subsets of S. Then the whole semigroup can be divided into two N disjoint convex subsets such that A naught is in A and B naught is in B. And if in addition S in co-convex, then this A and B parts are also co-convex sets. The proof of this result, this theorem 12 of stone type, is based on the following uh, two facts. Proposition 13, let A and B be F disjoint complementary subsets of S. Then A and B are F convex. If in addition, as if F co-convex, that then all both of these sets, A and B, are also F co-convex. This is one of these auxiliary facts, and the next one, lemma 14. Uh, if we have two subsets, A and B, which are end disjoint, and uh, an arbitrary point of the semigroup, say S, then either A and B plus B union, the singleton containing S, or A union S and B are end disjoint. This is a, a version of, very, of a very uh, familiar fact from convexity theory. The notion of convexity, finally, let me only mention that the notion of convexity of functions is, can be generalized in various ways in the context of functions I mean this convexity, and it was done by uh, Miklos Latskovich from Budapest and myself in, in some papers. Among, among them, there is a paper two. Uh, this is a very short list of references. This is the paper by me and Latskovich about convexity of functions. and. Uh, most of results I presented here uh, is from uh, our joint work with Jolt Palash, which is uh, now online published in semi-group forum. Uh, the paper three by Jolt Palash contains another, another stone type theorem of abelian, for abelian semi-groups. And this is an uh, uh, original original text by, by Stone from 1946. Thank you for your kind attention. <laughs> Some questions?